So let me show you now how we can turn on the lights. So we actually see the software generating an, generating an image for us. First, make sure you have cycles turned on. And you're all familiar with the wireframe and solid mode, but there's also a rendered mode. And if you click it, that will properly look like this. And everything is okay. It's just way too much light, and that's the reason why everything looks overblown. Now, if you select an area light, you can see that the strength is set to 100. So maybe we type in one. And you see now a little bit more information on the right side. And for the second light, if we type in one, you see now it's actually the opposite. My scene doesn't have enough light. Now we can go ahead and start maybe deciding on which side would you like to have more light left or right let's say more light from the right uh, sorry from the left side so this light will be much stronger than the right side and through that I for example by illuminating one side of my product stronger I will guide my eyes or the viewers eyes or attention to that side Plus, I also increase the, the three-dimensional look of the part. So, for example, maybe if I make this one 10 and this one 10, it's very softly illuminated or evenly. But, for example, here you don't really see any three-dimensional look as much. And, for example, if I set this one to 3, you can see that there's a little bit more of shadow signature on the right side. And that's just simply by working with different lights from different positions. And then you have to decide, like, how do you want to illuminate the part? Because your, your tools is not only light, but also what's illuminated and what's inside the shadow area. So this one maybe can actually go to 15. Okay. And also the position of the light is very important. So for example, does all the light come kind of like straight onto the part? And you can clearly see oh, it doesn't really look that great. I mean, you, the rim is nicely outlined because it's kind of like getting darker, but the front part is so flat, it's really difficult to see the shapes nicely. And, and from here, for example, you have more highlights changes over the body. So it's visually more interesting. And if, for example, I go to the back, you can see I shoot the light onto the rim and like your eyes immediately will look at those really bright parts and the section here. This is like a demonstration to how important, for example, the position and the direction of your light is. Okay. Imagine you're inside a room and you have a window. Outside it's overcast. There's light inside your room. And it's not really that you have kind of like a lamp in front of your windows that is shooting light inside your room, you have actually indirect light from your environment. And what these area lights are providing is so-called direct light. And our world supplies through the clouds or the sky so-called indirect lighting. And when you go to surface, you might have a button, use notes, and if you click it, you will see this. This, for example, is our world environment. So you see it's it's grayish. So if I change the color, maybe increase the strength a little bit. You can see that I'm tinting everything. And I'm setting this one kind of like to, to a white. And instead of going to zero, 
so to set my background completely black because even inside the studio you don't really have really full black it's more like a really dark gray I set this one to 0 0.1 so that means I'm still adding a little bit of kind of like indirect light from my environment and then use my my main lights as the, the lights to illuminate my object okay there are two things maybe to to mention for those area lights you might want to turn on multiple importance and the same also here for the environment okay and I will go into into this just in a moment so actually here this one I turn off just to show you what will happen because now we covered the basics of how to to set up lights and how to work with it and maybe now we can look into working with materials a little bit more so let's select the backdrop let's give it a, a material uh, let's call this backdrop okay and for example we can make it dark don't go like pure black because there's no true black actually in the world. It's all like a shade of really black or dark, dark gray. And you see by, by making the environment or the backdrop really grayish, I have a nice color contrast and make this piece pop out. So you can play, for example, with the colors. There's also a color picker, an eyedropper. I could, for example, pick this this color. Now you could also use uh, actually an image reference. So, uh, just for the sake of quick demonstration, oh, let me actually do it this way. Let me give you an idea. So we go to Chrome. Give it a second to load. And let's say Panton Fall Colors. Now let's see what we see here for images. Okay, I don't know. Maybe, maybe let's select this one. I'm just dropping it onto the desktop. And then here, I'm just generating new viewport opening an image go to my desktop and there's actually fall 2012 Panton kind of like something they picked out because I showed you before how you could sample inside here well let's say I would like to see how how could this for example look like with maybe Panton 5338. So here you see I, I load this image into Blender and then I can just with an eyedropper sample those colors. So you do not necessarily have to, to try to match a color here. If you have reference color values, you, for example, generated in Illustrator or Photoshop, you can actually then load those as images into Blender. And of course, it's not 100% correct how it transfers, but you can get very close when you sample out those color values. And for example, here the dark plastic, let's see maybe how does it look with titanium or maybe French roast yeah the titanium wasn't too bad there so great maybe 
this one here I would like to be this oop no oh this needs to be separated now okay let's leave it this way for a second okay so I showed you how you can change a color or for example pick a color from an image you imported but there's a lot more to it so maybe let's go back to to the backdrop and let's say you would like to make this backdrop to be reflective in real world basically every surface is somewhat reflective but the big question is how far is the surface polished or rough when it's very rough it's not very reflective the reflection is kind of blurred or broken up and if, if it's polished the surface is smooth and you will see a reflection on it and to do this with cycles it is actually very easy so you can go to surface and you see surface diffuse and diffuse basic basically means the material you're adding is very flat it does not show any type of reflection all you can do is maybe change the color kind of like a matte material and when you click on diffuse you will get a pop-up menu with different material types and if you would like to have a material to be reflective you can for example select glossy and now you see the backdrop is turned into a mirror surface so it's reflective let's take a look uh, for example on the options we have uh, we have again color so you could for example tint the reflection now you see what's white here is kind of like yellowish and that's basically this color is mixed into the reflection we can also lower the strength of the reflection because basically we're adding black into it and this way yeah decreasing the strength of that reflection so for example sometimes you only want to have a really small reflection on the white or the dark backdrop so it's, this part is still your main focus but if for example this would be zero now our iron is kind of like floating in black space it seems there's something it's really secured on and for example when you do 2d sketching by hand you put a drop shadow in so you secure or you anchor your sketch on the white canvas and on a bl black backdrop we can do this with a very small reflection okay so let me let me go back to uh, like a, a stronger reflection and there's also something called roughness and roughness for example defines now how uh, perfect the surface is if it's is it polished so the reflection is clean or should maybe be the surface be kind of rough so the reflection is very blurred and you see just with a really small amount I'm, I create a very diffused reflection and maybe 0 0.01 and if I zoom in a little bit you can for example see the reflection where which is cl very close to the object is kind of sharp and the further the object is away from the reflective surface the more blurry the result gets 0 0.05 maybe yeah that's too strong 0 0.02 So you see like from here to there it gets increasingly more blurry and now you see here are some crazy white dots popping up everywhere and uh, whenever you see those turn this multiple important sampling on and then actually they're disappearing so here turn those off again and off 
So there you see it. That's the reason why I ask you to turn this on. I don't really want to explain you all the, the technical details behind it. Just simply try to memorize this way when you see those white dots on reflective surfaces. Turn this one on and then that's not a problem anymore. So this is basically how you can apply different materials, uh, switch between different material types, and maybe for the blue, or no, it's yellow. Let's say this should be maybe, it should feel like a translucent material. Not a problem. We have a translucent material. So you can just select it. And basically it simulates how kind of like a silicone material or something like that might look like. Let's say this should be just plain transparent. So we could make it transparent. Problem is, of course, now you can look into our object. And of course, uh, we see there is nothing inside. Or you see it's transparent. If, for example, it should look like glass, and glass means that the light is being bent, so you have a refraction, you can use glass. And then with glass, you see you have small ref uh, reflections on the glass surface. You can slightly see inside, and it's uh, the light is slightly bent. If, for example, it should look like velvet, you can select velvet. So you see, it's not really very difficult if this should be like a reflective material, super clean gold. Let's go back to diffuse. Okay. So I hope by this you actually notice that the way how you have to think about is what type of material do I have? Do I have clear plastic? Do I have, for example, a fabric material? Do I have a diffuse material like wood or carpet or something? Do I have a polished material? Is it, for example, like the aluminum of an iPad or MacBook Pro, which is uh, kind of like roughened up? So I work with the, the glossy value and the roughness is, for example, is it polished steel? I have the roughness set to zero. So those are kind of like the basic properties to start thinking about.